All right, guys, we got a video for you today. We're going to be taking about 90% of the guts inside this 2006 Suzuki Boulevard S50. We're going to be placing all of that into this 05 S50 frame. We've got pretty much shipped down. And the reason is the collar piece right here on my 06 was snapped off when the previous owner wrecked it. And that allows your forks to hit your gas tank. And that does not look pretty on either side. Then I'm also missing quite a few parts that were standard on this bike, like the backrests and the luggage rack, and you know, it comes with some engine guards. Some jackass tried to paint over chrome, which I don't know why the fuck you would do that. But we're gonna get to that, and we're gonna be showing you step by step on how to disassemble and reassemble the bike as far as with what parts we do have on the bike so thanks for tuning in i'm going to start with removing the side covers i'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket on this front bolt and there's two nipples that you're going to be pulling the side cover off of one's in the back and one's in the front that you pull right off Under the seat. There you go. Wow. Next is the left side cover. There is an Allen wrench you will need to use for this bolt. Not sure the size. Go buy you some fucking tools. Same thing on this side. Two nipples. Come on, guys. Just pop them out. Suck on them a little bit, maybe. There you go. Next is your seat. You're going to have an Allen head bolt on each side. Next set of bolts would be your brackets right here that connect your seat to your sissy bar. I do not have them on this bike. They were on the 05 model, but as soon as you get through taking them out, all you gotta do is lift your seat up in the front and push forward from the back and it should just pop right into place. Hooks right up under this bar right here. There's a couple things you'll need to take loose. Most of you probably have a 10 millimeter bolt right here that's going to connect the bottom of the gas tank to the frame. Next, what you're going to do is undo the fuel line coming from the petcock going down to the carburetors. Watch out, it's going to have some gas in it if you have gas in the tank. Also, make sure you turn your petcock to the off position. You get those two things removed. All you're going to need to do is lift up on your tank and pull it towards the back of your bike out of this insert right here next thing you're going to want to do is take your four bolts out for your gas tank mount let's just pull right out next is your frame covers you're going to have three phillips head bolts in the neck of your bike here, here, and here. Just unscrew them. Next, undo these bolts right here. It wraps the bottom of the frame covers around the actual frame of the bike. And then your frame covers should just pull off. Repeat the process on the opposite side. Next thing we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and take my exhaust off to get it out of the way because we need to access the battery box. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to be undoing this cover. It's got two bolts in it, one up top right here, which is a 8 millimeter, I think, or a 10. And it also has another bolt right here on the back. And then you can use a Phillips or a 10. I'm going to pop that cover off. Whoops. Got your two bolts removed. This panel, hill plate, duty cover, whatever you want to call it, should just pop right off. Now, depending on what exhaust setup you have, the original, which has the cross beam that runs through the battery box, which is the pain in the ass to get out, or, you know, your own custom exhaust. These are the Shorty Ingo exhausts. I literally bought these off of Amazon for, I think, 80 bucks, and they sound pretty decent, and they're short. I got them in a nice place. Um... Just go ahead and take your exhaust off and I'll see you at the next step. Alright, if you got the original exhaust set up and you took the cross pipe out and everything, you should have taken this back bolt out of the battery box. That's one of a few bolts we'll be taking out. We also need to take this bolt right here and this bolt out on both sides. And those are 14 millimeters. Before you completely undo your battery box, you're going to need to unhook the rectifier, I believe is what it's called. It's got two 10 millimeter bolts, one right here, one right there. Go ahead and take that off. Got them bolts taken out. Slide this rectifier out of place. You're going to go ahead and undo the rest of your battery. I got a couple of leads broken going to my negative side of my battery and I have to figure out what them are. No. Instead of using proper bolts and nuts, uh, the rednecks before us decided to drive a sheet metal screw into the side of the battery post on both sides. Not one, but both. Go ahead and take off the rest of your exhaust. There's two bolts on each side of the header. Should be a 12 millimeter. Take both sides off. Slide them out from behind the foot rest and we'll continue on to the foot controls. Was you able to get your exhaust out? Cool. Next thing we're gonna have to undo is gonna be the bracket for the foot controls and it's also connected with the brake line. And it's just easier just to go ahead and undo all this stuff and just take it out all in one huge piece. First, go ahead and do this bolt that connects your brake line to your frame. Should be a 10 millimeter. Next, you'll be taking your actual foot control bracket off, and there's going to be eight bolts that hold it on the four on each side of the frame. Take them loose. All right, guys, once you get all your bolts out. From the bottom should just drop down if you went ahead and took your brake line loose it's going to make it a whole lot easier for you also there are carter pins in the four outside bolts of the foot control bracket you're going to have to take those carter pins out easier to do if you've got your exhaust off you can do it without doing that though Last bolt you want to undo for your brake line is going to be right here. It connects your torque bar and also a bracket behind here all to the frame. This has a carter pin in the front. The back is a 14 millimeter. I'm just going to go ahead and cut this off. We're just going to buy some new carter pins because these are kind of rusted. All 
All right, guys, it's the back side of where we just took that carter pin out. You're going to take that bolt out. Should be a 14 millimeter head. Go ahead and disconnect your adjustment rod. So just twist all the way out. Actually, you can see that my cam for it broke due to negligence by a local shop around here. <coughs> And that's why it's just hanging there. Sad when you got to go over professionals' work. And this should just slip right out of joint. Should be able to pull that out through this little slit. Now you just need to undo the cable for your brake sensor. It should be a 2 millimeter bolt. You're just going to want to unthread that and it's going to slide through its little slot just like the rear piece did we took out previously. And there you go, that is your whole brake system and your foot controls is out of its place. Forgot to mention before you pull away your foot controls you're going to need to undo your kickstands safety switch you need to take this slave cylinder cover off i believe they're eight millimeter bolts you're gonna have three of these bolts it's actually a lot it's a grommet a spacer another grommet and then your screw and a washer. And I believe that's it. And there's going to be all that on all three screws. Then you're just going to pull your slave cylinder cover off. And get a couple wires down here that are tied up. I think they're waterproof. You just... Next, we're going to be working on the back side of the bike. We're going to be taking the rear suspension off. Then we'll work on the back tire, getting that out. And then we're going to pull the drive shaft out. Start by taking off both bolts for the rear shocks. This one requires a little more finagling than the other side. There's going to be a screw you'll have to pull out at the bottom of this easier with another person pushing down on it so you can get it out there without any resistance and then from there you'll just rotate the bottom out of place and the top should pull right out time to get that back wheel off we're going to start by taking the torque link loose it's got a bolt on the back side with the carter pin in it so you're going to want to take that carter pin out few washers in between here don't lose them next we're going to take these three bolts out on the drive shaft mine are 14 millimeters I don't know about yours you know rednecks own it before me so get your three bolts three washers out be careful because it is probably going to leak a little fluid. I'm sure you don't want that on your tire. Go ahead and get ready for any kind of fluid with a bucket or a rag. After that, we're going to take the back axle out. 
all you'll need is a screwdriver for this side and whatever i think it's a three quarter inch socket for the other side and you'll have to take the beauty cap off as well start by taking off this beauty cap just a flathead screwdriver do it pop it in there get it to come loose and then you're going to use your three quarter inch socket Pull your rear axle bolt out, and your wheel and drive shaft is uh, shaft drive is ready to come out. All right, we're going to be moving on to the front wheel. Going to start by undoing your speedometer cable um, from your axle and pop it out of its place right here on the fender. Shouldn't need any special tools for that. Sit that off to the side. Next, we're going to go ahead and undo the bracket for the brake caliber hose. Make sure you don't lose your bolts and then you can loosen up your brake caliper with the two allen wrenches mike did he get you a breaker bar some sort give you a little bit of leverage Slide that off your rotor and either hang this on something or have something nearby to sit it on. Go ahead and loosen up your top triple tree bolts. Do be careful once they get so far out they are going to have a little bit of force behind them. They're not going to blast out and tear a hole in your face but they will pop out and land somewhere else if you're not careful next thing you want to do is undo your pinch bolts on both sides I need a cheater bar for this as well. Right. After you get those pinch bolts loose, your fork should just slide right out with your wheel still attached, your fender. Always remember, no matter what Canada alert, intruder alert tells you, you don't know what he's talking about. Do you need a film? No. After you get your forks and your front wheel off, go ahead and pop the top of your radiator cover loose so you can pull it back. We're going to be draining our radiator. Go ahead and pop the top cap, and we will be undoing this hose right here that goes into the frame, actually, and we'll be flushing it that way. You're also going to need to take loose your top bolt for your radiator slash engine mount, I believe. Might not be an engine mount. It's just a radiator bolt. 
and there is a bolt right under here we've already took them loose for the bottom of the radiator go ahead and take them loose and I'll help you move your radiator around and try and get this fitting off after you've got your radiator drained um, we've got most of the coolant out right now what you're going to want to do is you've got the reservoir right here right above it it'll come out of place once you get your top uh, bolt out there's also going to be two wires I don't I think they might be going to the um, fans I'm not sure that's probably what it is but you're gonna want to unhook both of them and that's gonna come out all in one bunch now that you got your radiator loose you probably needed to undo that hose going to the top of your head and you're going to pull your radiator out with your reservoir it's already connected boom all right now we're going to be working on the rear air box getting that out and loosening these carburetors from the engine you're gonna to get this air box out we're gonna have to pull the filter out first i mean you can probably do it without it but i'm going to show you anyways you're going to be unloosening these hose clamps there's one right here and there's also one right there as you can see you'll have to take a screwdriver from the side and get that and then to get the actual air box out you've got that bolt right there and there's a front bolt right down here somewhere you can't see it you have to take this rubber boot out first and I'll see you on the next step after you've got your air filter out you want to take your fuse box off the side of the air box it's a Phillips head screw right here towards the back of the fuse box bottom take that loose it should come right off the air box next you will take one two and three screws out take them out and your air box is just gonna pull right out going to come out with a drain line and this drain line looks like it's going all the way back up to the top of your engine right here we're just going to unhook that from the air box down here and pull that off and leave that all right we're going to start working on getting this engine out um, you're going to need to loosen up your carburetors, both of them. I would just unhook them from the engine, just leave them just kind of hanging there. Undo your spark plugs, undo your ground wire for the engine right here. You're also going to undo the three transmission wires that are coming out the back. Right here, you'll be able to see them. Black woven material also going to need to undo the drive shaft boot right here go ahead and get that loosened up uh, we're going to be removing the four control lever for your gear shifter we're also going to be removing the engine bolts there's one right here there is another one that goes through right here and last would be the front one which is located right here we're also going to have to take this mount off and the mount right here and on the other side uh, we're going to have to take the fan loose which is just two bolts on the inside of the fan right here and you might as well just go ahead and take your ignition loose too because it's also connected to that motor mount and I believe that is everything I forgot to tell you that you need to also undo your slave cylinder have a bucket handy because it is going to drip you don't want to get that anywhere because that shit eats paint off um, as well we've got a couple of bolts I forgot to mention that we're going to need to take right here this bracket that's connecting both sides of the frame and the fan all together and also 
the four frame bolts that are going to come out to here and to there and then we're going to pull this side of the frame off get the fan out of the way and then we will be pulling the engine out all right guys we didn't really show you exactly how we got the engine out but it's i mean it's pretty straightforward once you get all those pieces undone it's going to come out you just might have to finagle it around a little bit tilt it to the side and whatnot but we do have the motor in the other frame and we put the whole bike back together and it's running i need to jump it off the battery's dead but it was like that before i mean it went together pretty flawlessly a little bit of a uh, trial and error on some pieces having to take some pieces back off and rewire the harness and everything but uh we did leave the handlebars on all the controls and the carburetors we took all of that and the wire loom up at the same time and transplanted it over to the other frame there's the empty frame now we've got most of the pieces over here in this corner um still got to put the engine guards on i uh, still got to put the luggage racks on the other bike uh, other than that i'm going to be cleaning this gas tank out and reusing it i think it's going to look better than the red it's got no dents on it. It's also got the boulevard badges still nice and intact. We'll be removing this sticker. But other than that, guys, yeah, we've got it done. Hope y'all enjoyed the video.